Luke, the 15th chapter. Um, I don't apologize for uh, going right into it. There are still some, um, I believe, pressing through the rain for various reasons. Um, I'm not you know, absent-minded about what's going on in the world. So please forgive us in advance. That's almost probably being a little uh, condescending. It's clearly, we're, we know the pink elephant is in the room. However, by faith, uh, at some point, your life should mimic or have some sort of residue of what you're believing internally or, or that secret, that, that prayer closet. So if by chance, uh, it does not look like we are responding in a media uh, type fashion, uh, some level of consistency of trying to keep you abreast of what's going on, it's evident. Um, so please charge it to my head and not my heart to anyone that's listening. Unfortunately, the census of what I'm seeing, and I'm not the, I'm not the, the best, I'm not the best barometer of what's going on in social media. However, the thing that rises to the top is the thing I've noticed that's often passed around the most, the thing that's forwarded the most, and it's heresy, it's hoax, it's the next person who, I mean, outside of spiritual revelation, outside of someone that walks in the office of a prophetic uh, uh, nature, that it's some some gal and some gir <laughs> girl, some girl, some guy, and a guy that uh, understands the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The conspiracy theory after it happens. Well, I'm just like when Chloe was around. If she that psychic, she should know I'm about to call, so she should be calling me, and she could get more money out of it. I know that's common Amen. these days, but I, I'm just saying that. So when you see uh, Penuel in Christ first um, and, and under the umbrella of endless touch, it's, it's us saying what's evident is the life that we're living uh, by faith. Uh, we are not a fool, and I don't even like the soapbox that I'm on right now, but I have to be conscious. I can't be so stern where I don't care if nobody thinks I'm trusting the Lord. But I also have to be uh, humble enough and conscious to care about some of the idiosyncrasies, some of the mentality, some of the foolishness, not that the world, but that the church is perpetuating. And so when you see people doing that, I just want to let you know it's not that we're in the absence of it. So let's just enjoy the Word of God, have Bible study. Um, when you got people like to lie saying, you're going to have to put me out because I just want to be in his presence. Clearly, we all know that God will meet you in your car, the highways and byways. But sometimes it's just nothing like being in that particular familiar place. Uh, and, and I'm glad to have a home, uh, a church home, if you will, that allows that moment to live in, in all the times that we're going through. Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke 15, Luke 15, Luke 15. It's a familiar portion of scripture. Um, but we're going to do something creative um, that does not divorce ourselves from the, uh, the authenticity of the word of God. But I just want to trust God in what's about to happen. Luke 15. Um, I, can, I can see the few people that are here that are scattered, but I'm trusting you that are at home or some of you that don't have the luxury of pulling over but just taking the ride um, to and fro to an essential place, whether you be here or abroad. Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke 15, Luke 15. And Luke, the 15th chapter, if you began at the beginning, I'm going to probably take you to the 11th verse. Um, yeah, the 11th verse. But in the beginning of Luke 15, and almost actually in its entirety, um, if it's in red, it's what Jesus said, um, which is what we were taught as kids. We know that Jesus is speaking. And it's, in its entirety, you will find Jesus talking about uh, three lost things or a few lost things. Mm -hmm. And Jesus initially talk, starts with the parable of the lost sheep. Um, and in the parable of the lost sheep, we find in verse 1, uh, let me remove myself from all of us. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners, sinners to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, he being Jesus, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine, ninety-nine, in the wilderness?
wickedness and go after that which is lost until he is found. It may seem foolish that the, the parable has Christ talking about a shepherd leaving 99 sheep to go search for just one, but the shepherd knew that the 99 would be safe in the sheepfold, whereas the lost sheep would be uh, more so in danger. There's a few things that ought to be had in that. Be careful when you take the perspective of being the one part of the 99, and remember at, the, at times that we've all been the one that Come was on. lost. Yes, Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And if you remember, if you chimed in or tuned in, if you will, when we did the 23rd number of Psalms, you will understand the significance of a good shepherd, and the shepherd becomes accountable. Now, here's what I've learned about us that are lost, and this is going to be real good. I can't, I can't hang long on the lost sheep. It's just kind of a buildup of God, of Christ's mentality and his, his uh, delivery when he gets to the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. if, if we're not careful, if we if are not careful, we will miss the fact that when he leaves the 99, he is not disregarding the 99. He has now left the 99 amongst themselves. <laughs> Got right. it? Here's what I don't like about church, and I happen to go to church. What I don't like about church is that, what, what is the old saying? When the cat's away? Uh, they would the, run and play. The right, mice will right, run and right, play. Right. That, when the cat's away, the, the, mouse, the mouse will play. Yeah. Right? right? Got it? Okay. So here's what's, here, okay, y'all not feeling that. Substitute teacher. I got a teacher right here who was once a sub, or I have some horrible bad students <laughs> in the back that couldn't wait till the substitute teacher came because you knew that the substitute teacher uh, arguably would not be as greedy, would not be as strict with the, uh, uh, the, the, the lessons or the syllabus, if you will. And more often than not, the, the substitute teacher already had one foot out the door because they're like, this ain't my class, so I don't care. Y'all do what y'all want. <laughs> so that's unfortunate when it happens in education. So the problem is when we don't recognize that we have to be responsible for one another. And I know that's probably not going to get no loud amen or praise or clap. And in some instances it would if you could remember when you needed somebody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to free not only Christ, if you will, but the shepherd being a man. We have to free the pastor or free leadership to be responsible for Come others. Come on now. Come on. For real, for real. Here, here's the next thing that I got a problem about dealing with the lost sheep. At what point do you always need the same type of guidance? Uh, that's cool. yes, sir. At what point do you need the same type of hug? You need the same prayer all the time. Listen, it, I can't baby you for the for all five years. You need to grow up sometime so that when the new people come amongst us, that you know how to pass on what's been given unto you. That's right. And so the lost sheep, the lost sheep is, is, is one that is reflective of showing the intimacy that God has with those that become astray. And if, we're, and if we also don't understand each sheep, each sheep has a high value. The shepherd knew it was worthwhile to search diligently for the one. Here's the next problem we have. It's, low, it's a low-hanging fruit mentality, but, but I got to do it. If this is not you, I get it. But just because it's not you, it registers with somebody else. A lot of us, if we were honest, we don't like when the pastor becomes diligent, giving him or herself uh, over to people that we think ain't worth it. <laughs> I come from a time, much, much, much time, young, younger, uh, when you would hear the foolishness about the different denominations where you can only care about the tithers or the givers, or you only care about the, that sounds good in sermon, I don't know nothing about that. Right. We have some faithful givers, um, and I must be completely fair, you can't roll your eyes because if it's not you, you're comfortable. But you should be, as it pertains to the word of God. We have the same people that give in the church. They're saying, and it should not be so, because we all need to be accountable. But here's what's crazy. Those that I know, and I can identify, not because I measure them, um, because I can become acutely aware who's a giver in the body. Give what you have, and pray to God to give what you, des what you desire if you don't possess it. But I find myself trailing after people that have not deposited anything. The 80-20 rule applies. The 80 20 rule applies. But what would I look like? It'd be much easier mm -hmm. to baby and pacify mm -hmm. those that are giving. And the contributions, literally, literally to God is truly the provider here. But the contributions are that which allow us to make it through. But I believe that uh, 
I'll hustle and figure it out in Jesus' name. Hustle is not a cuss word. It's a word. Mm -hmm. and, and if you do it by faith, surely some great things can happen. He, he, he deals with the lost uh, sheep. He, he, he deals with the lost coin. The lost coin is a, a woman look, look, finding a coin in the house. I don't have time to break it down. But, but, but what happens when she loses the coin, I'll just read verse 8 for you. Just pray with me. And then pray for me. Um, I, I can't be so hasty because I really, really have something to deliver tonight. And I like to give a foundation, a glide path, a, a platform to really build a, something very solid. That when I get to the parable of the lost son, I have to reveal some things that need to be found in the character of God. Because it'll be easy for some of you to dismiss what I'm about to say, even though I believe it'll leap from the text. So let me gather myself. When we get to the lost coin in, in verse 8, um, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. Uh, during that time, Palestinian women received 10 silver coins as a wedding gift. And that's going to make so much sense when we talk about God, I almost want to hug the phone uh, <laughs> uh, or the camera, whatever that is. I'm about to expose something in Luke 11, 15, 15 and 11 about the responsibility of a bride. Mm -hmm. it's, going to, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. I, I pray. The ten silver coins was as, as a wedding gift. And besides their monetary value, these coins would hold sentimental value like a wedding ring or they would, during that, during that time, it could be property. It's a, a bowery, a dowry, a dowry. And in that dowry, it's the, it's the bride's responsibility to bring something to the husband. And some of y'all real, real, real um, spiritual, you should be able to get ahead of me right now. And, and it's not only things like a ring, um, but to lose something that had that type of value was like extremely distressing. Am I making sense? Yeah. So I know when you read it like parabolically and no one gives you a background, you'll just glaze over it. Okay, somebody lost a coin. But it's bigger than that. Because some of you rich people don't bend over for quarters. I've learned to bend over for pennies. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense happy? Like for real, and I'm not, that ain't no joke in that. I'm not trying to be silly. I've seen people not bend over for quarters. I find myself daily for pennies. And it's something inward for me, it's just me, me condescending and telling God, that there's just no amount of money that I'm willing to pass, that I have arrived, that anything that can buy something mm -hmm. or be, wow. be attributed, a, va a value, mm -hmm. thank you, that's amazing, a value that I'm going to pass it up. Just as a woman uh, would rejoice at finding her lost coin or ring, so or the angels would rejoice over a repentant sinner. But it's not only that she lost it, but it's the manner in which she went after finding it. <laughs> uh, sometimes you lose valuable things Come on. Uh, letting stuff around you get dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> I wish you could yes, see some sir. places. She, to, to light a candle is to suggest that it could be in a dark place. Uh, to sweep is to suggest that, that that's reflective of lackadaisical behavior. Hey, the house has, not, has become cluttered. And I've used this example before because it makes all the sense in the world. I can find more fluffier ones, but I'm going to use the one that's close to my heart. When my mother would clean, you know, as the old, now I hear why people say God bless her. So when, the old, when my mother would clean, it was the worst thing of my day. I hated it. <laughs> Lord, I just, Lord, this is, I'm not, I'm not being dramatic. She gone and ain't cleaned my house in forever and it still bothers me. The first thing, when my mother would clean, I didn't think the house was there. Anybody know anybody like that? Where they clean, and you look around and go, the house is not dirty. But when my mother would clean, and if, and if you are watching, please uh, be patient. I promise you, this methodical delivery right now is lacking fanfare, and I'm not a fluffy personality. This is the time where you, the enemy will provoke you and can have you turn off. Please don't turn me off. And I ain't talking about me. Please don't turn the word of God off. When my mother would clean, it bothered me because she made more of a mess in cleaning than the house was when she deemed it dirty. 
when my mother would clean, she would take all the uh, all the lining out, take all the dishes out, and just wash the dishes. And we did My mom wasn't doing creatures. We didn't have no roaches and none of that. And, you know, so I, I couldn't understand that she would move the sofa from the wall. You know, I vacuum what you can see. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. <laughs> just like all y'all lotion and lather your whole body. Uh, listen, all this right here got lotion. Anything else? You, I just don't know what's gonna be happening right here. Only lotion or lather what you can see. So what's not, what I would never think is going to be exposed, I don't address. Come on now. Well, y'all missed that. Yes, so what if I got wet in the in outside because it's raining profusely in California? And what if I got wet and I only had shorts to put on to replace that what's covering, I mean my pants? I would be embarrassed because something I did not address is about to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish mm -hmm. I was helping somebody. Mm -hmm. And so when my mama would clean, I would start finding treasure. I would have a treasure hunt because, oh, there go that toy. Oh, go there go that cell phone I thought they stole because I told them I stole it. Oh, there go. So when she cleaned up, it exposed my behavior. Come on. How did I lose, how did I lose something that I thought was so valuable? Because if it was valuable enough, apparently I didn't clean enough like my mama cleaned while I'm helping. And so when I see this woman cleaning, it's also reflective that we don't have, we have lost things of value because of dirty behavior. Mm. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to hang around there. I got, I got to go somewhere. There's a lot of y'all clean folk watching, so you're not feeling this part of the message. The Bible says, and in conjunction with, and a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Give me portion. Somebody say portion. 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 Just because that, 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 that way they know somebody's in the building. The certain man, the, the, the word certain is also translated to mean destined. A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided them unto his living. Uh, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Uh, when you when you begin in the beginning, when you start in the beginning of the 11th chapter, it's in conjunction with all the other parables. And has a conjunction. It's a function. Okay. And so a certain man had two sons. The certain of his father uh, the cert, uh, said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Somebody say portion. Portion. Now here's what's dangerous about a portion. The portion is a part share of an estate or uh, uh, giving by... Uh, by, by the dissension, by law, uh, to an heir. My issue is, he did not ask for his inheritance. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. When you need an, when you get an inheritance, someone has to die. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, oftentimes with inheritance, there comes responsibility. I'm gonna get through this. I promise you. I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna let the enemy win this one. When he asks for a portion, portion is also trans translated dowry. Mm -hmm. Dowry is likened to marriage. Nobody got to die to be in that relationship. Let me try I mean, you might be married long enough and want them to die. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about we are actually still love one another. <laughs> so, ain't no smiles, okay? So, when he asks for his portion, it's likened to a dowry. When you ask for inheritance, you're, you're looking for responsibility. Hmm. Get it? Because oftentimes when someone leaves an inheritance, they will leave, they will leave uh, um, statutes or they will leave uh, prerequisites that you got to qualify. Have you seen things like that or heard movies like that? You know, in order to get this money, Shaq's, Shaq's the kids have to get degrees. I don't know if that still stands, but that he, did, he said that publicly. Shaquille O'Neal's kid, he said they have to get degrees in order to get to inherit what I've worked for. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you, you mm -hmm. look a little slow. Here's my problem. If we're not careful, we go to our father. And when we know that he possesses things that we need, we often go to God not wanting responsibility. <laughs> so we go to God saying, give me a portion. It's a little bit. Okay, I'm not lost. <laughs> How many of us would be honest? And in atmospheres like this, it, be, it becomes more gratifying when you got a bunch of people saying amen. Good, I'm glad they're not here because now it has to be personal. Who here, whether in this room or watching, would say that I've gone to God and I'm going to be honest. I just wanted a portion. 
Because I don't want the full responsibility of a child of God. Some of us right now are dealing with either past behaviors, dealing with friends and family members that are believers, and they know that their condition or they believe that their condition would change if they change their behavior, but they love what they're doing right now. Okay, you don't remember a family member or a friend going, man, I will go to church, man, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go when I get it right. But you still, you're going to go when you get it right, but you still pray when you need it. You're going to go when you get it right, but when you get stuck, you're still asking to help you, but you don't want him to do too much because you don't want the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the reason why some of us might be struggling with this. So that means I got to preach this from my heart. Here's one of the reasons why some of us might be struggling with this. You may do just like what the prodigal son did. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, feel, I, I must got an old man in me today because I, I keep reaching for him. We do just like the prodigal son do. When the prodigal son got his portion and not his inheritance, he is now forsaking responsibility. He's now taking something from his father, but has now relieved himself of following his father's rules. Am I talking to anybody here? God has blessed you, but you still don't listen. Mm -hmm. Me first, anybody else second. He, that ain't all the time, but we find ourselves, the, 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 the disciples... Uh, ended up with 12 baskets left over, which is reflective of the satchels that they would carry after the two fish and five loaves. But the Bible says immediately after the miracle that he had to compel them to get into the ship. Here's what's amazing about it. I'm wondering if I'm going to get an amen. Oftentimes when, it, when we talk about or preach that God got to compel us or he's working with us and I'm going through, it's often because we're struggling. The enemy is busy. Busy. That's not true. In this text, they just got a miracle that they didn't pay for and God still has to compel them to do something. Miss me with everybody acting like they're struggling because they're suffering or they're going through. It could be right after a blessing. We still don't listen. You got your new car and I still ain't seen it. Right. You got your new job. You still ain't tired. Maybe that's why you didn't come tonight because we're going to talk about you. You, you, you. Am I making sense? So he got his portion because he didn't want the responsibility. Here, what, So I set this up for you to, to say, well, maybe this is why you're struggling with it. You receive it because it's in the text. The words are there where you can define it so it's more of a grammatical moment than a spiritual one. Then let me help you. When he turns around, Cassidy, and he leaves his father, he has his father's broken. He don't realize he's broken his father's heart. During that time, in order for him to divvy up what he owned, he, he couldn't go to the bank. He didn't go to Chase and then have someone come appraise everything he had. And he had to start selling stuff. And get stuff from neighbors. And the neighbors would ask, what are you doing? Oh, man, I got a son that don't want to stay home because he don't want to listen. Mm, I got a son that want a portion because he don't, want to, he don't want to wait for inheritance and responsibility. Which lends itself to why the other son was mad when he came back. Because you got yours and you had to turn up and I had to stay here and keep working. So one, you partly mad because you wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know why a lot of, a lot of Christians are mad? at some of us when we get in trouble because they wanted to do it. Yeah. Wow. A lot of folks judge us because they wanted to do it. You just was stupid and nothing didn't care and I just didn't. Okay, now I jump. So, when he gets to the portion and inheritance, how can I do this without a live illustration? His father hands him his portion. At the end of the parable, the Bible says, it does not suggest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump and I'm going to come back. You're going to find out that his father was waiting for him. Right? For those that know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he's waiting for him and anticipating such a fall, whether that's a prophetic utterance or whether that's just a parent that just knows a baby's demise is coming. Parents in here, good parents know when a baby's going to go through. Mm -hmm. And your baby could be 20, 30, 40 years old. You would ask the question, why didn't he know that he broke his father's heart? And I'm glad y'all looking at me intently. The reason why he didn't know he broke his father's heart, just like we don't know that we break God's heart, is because the last interaction of our marriage, our relationship, was he gave me something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when he gave him something, he immediately turns from the presence of his father, from the face of his father, because he gives up his face for his hand. Uh, I've been paying, someone's been giving me the ability and to watch some of the uh, some of the Bible study notes of people posting. I know someone like Miss Denise is gonna really love this if she's watching. 
If we're not careful, we have fallen in love with God's hand so much that we forget the privilege of God as being in his presence, which is his face. But when he blessed his son, he turned around because all he wanted was something out of his father's hand. Many of us cannot relate to this because all we can remember the last time I talked to God, he blessed me. He ain't tripping. No, you ain't talking to me, Pastor Kenny. He gave me this new job. Hey, Amen. You do know you haven't given him the glory for it, though. No, God ain't tripping off me. He gave me, you know, let's just do stuff and things. He, he gave me this new car. Yeah, but you haven't been faithful over it. So it's hard for us to believe that God is disappointed and brokenhearted because all I can remember is the last time I met with him, he was blessing me. When was the last time you blessed somebody that already knew that what they called a loan was really thieving, thievery? Because you knew they weren't going to give it back. Right. Come on, talk to me now. Help somebody. And isn't it amazing that you already know that when, they, when you see them again, they're going to act like everything good. Clearly you know you stole from me because you called it a loan and not paying me back. But you don't understand that, watch this, because my character has changed. And people will manipulate your good character and people will manipulate the love of God that's in you. Um, I gotta be careful not to be combative. There are some people, because you love God, that's what they're using. Right. Yeah. They know normally you fight to be different, you're fighting, not, you're fighting to be transparent, you fight not to have your old ways. So people will use you knowing that your fight is not to be who you used to be. And they'll put you in a position. And they think it's a game. The Bible says that he turned from his father and immediately lost his substance and riotous living. Meaning that he was just, you would, depending on what uh, the, the version of the word of God you would have, you would understand that he had riotous living. Somebody say riotous living. Riot. In this riotous living, something ended up happening when he turned from his father only to receive his portion. Thank you, God. When he turned from his father and went to riotous living, verse 14 says, and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and began to be in want. He began to be in want. Want is, want is, want is defined as, as found in the 23rd number of Psalms is lacking the essentials. <laughs> yes, sir. You left your father's house having everything you needed, but you forsook that because you didn't like the rules. You get your portion, the one no inheritance, and in a very short time, you lose everything to where you are down to a place. This is by very definition. You can do your, you can do your study that you can do your study guides. I'm not trying to find words to qualify the moment. I'm not trying to be relevant because of what we're going through. God is just that good. That his word is a living word. It's a germinating word. It, it, feel, it, it works in 98 and in 2028, it's going to be just as relevant. So in this relevant text, when he used the word want, meaning to the essentials, meaning they shepherd. Remember, I said these parables are progression. God really knows what he's doing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not yeah. want. The problem is we divorce ourselves from the shepherd part of our father because he's always just providing the essentials. What happens when you want more? What happens when living your best life become a good song for about six months and you don't live your best life but now you got your greatest debt? Right. He is now in a position after he has wasted the portion from which his father has given him and now he's in a place where he's in want. Now here's what's crazy. Be careful how you handle what God has given you. You'll be so caught up that you don't realize that he's blessed you in time of famine. The famine rose in the land. And when a famine happens, and this is where I'm going to link it to the moment that we're living in right now. I'm going to see if I'm going to keep you with me. He began to be in want, and, the, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. When, when, when we mess up what God has given us, God will multiply the impact of messing up what we had and we will recognize that we are in a famine. We're lacking something. This ain't just financial, but just a lacking spirit, a lack of love. You, you figure out what your lack is. Here's the most dangerous thing that can happen to a believer in a time of famine. 
you're drawing yourself to something you normally never would. Okay, let me try that back. Who in here and are watching has had a relationship that only existed because you were in a family? I got hands going up. Who in some people only had them children because there was a feminine in the man. Some people are in a marriage because there was a famine. Are y'all mature enough to read in between the lines? Some people are in a marriage because there was a famine in the land. And then they turn around and say, oh, the divorce rate amongst believers is 50%. Well, technically, I don't really believe that's true because of the 50%, 90% of them was never supposed to be married. But when there's a famine in the land, you join yourself to things. <laughs> Come, on. Come on now. You, how many times you heard the, the, the young thug, if you will, I'm not trying to be funny, that, that man, I needed family. So you really didn't want to gangbang, but, but you needed family. So you joined yourself because there was a famine of love in your spirit. Oh, you ain't got to like it. If I'm lying, I'll leave. Come here, young lady. You really not want to, you don't want a prostitute. But because of my father issue, my mother or uh, uh, whatever issue it, I'm not. I don't really want to be here. But this is where I was finding love. Mm -hmm. You know how many people in certain lifestyles will tell you to your face, "Don't come here. Don't do this." I, I was broken, and so in my famine, am I, am I making sense to anybody? Yes, There's some people that are yes, engaging in illicit behavior, illegal behavior. They ain't no crook. They ain't trying to be no criminal. But there's a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. You are not a thief. But the famine has caused you to. You are not even a drunk. But the famine of loneliness. Hear me right now. What's going on in this nation. What not only the virus. But, but the, the residue of it. Of being socially. Not only distanced. But socially withdrawn. Mm -hmm. People are in a famine in their homes. Safe but depressed. Mm -hmm. Oh I'm talking to somebody. Safe but lonely, safe, but now they've been, when, when, there was no, when there was movement in the world, they stayed away from the abuse. Now they locked in with it. When there was freedom in the world, and when I mean freedom, you know, freedom of activity with not, with not uh, uh, these, these ambiguous curfews, because if you shut down everything, there's nowhere to go. You're really telling people stay home. Uh, when, 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 when there was freedom and movement in the world, you know, you stayed home to stay busy. You stayed away from home to stay busy because an idle mind is a devil's workshop. And now that you're safe at home, you're, 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 mm. you're going to be free from catching the virus, but Come on. you're not free from suicidal thoughts. Mm. Come on, speak I on got it. a hand up. I, I, you're not free from depression because you remember, mm. come on, some of y'all are real silly like me. You just go to the mall just to just go. To go. But now there's a famine in the land and now you have to find more in you. And the Bible says that not only did he join himself uh, with someone of that country, which lets us know that th these, th this, this is uh, uh, a heathen nation. Anything other than Jew is heathen. Period. This is, this is what it is. It's Jew and Gentile. That's what it is. And so we know that he being a Jew would find Dealing with pigs being unclean or the swine, from verse 16 said, he would, he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, I'm about to do real good, I'm about to help you. When he came to himself, the first thing is, when you're in a famine, you're joined to things that you never intended. And if you're not careful, you'll start partaking of things you never thought you would. Yes, sir. Joining is one thing. I need you to see this. I'm begging you to see this. He joined him, but he could have fed him. When he joined him, then he sent him, which meant he would have never been here had he not joined here. Some of us have are in places that only got we only got there because of who we joined. So that means that we are in some behaviors. That we're in some pains, we're in some depression, stuff and things. We are in some, forget depression, let me stop making you unhappy. So you're, you're lazy because you joined with somebody. You're like some days ago. Your procrastination has risen back up. Your, your inability to dream has come back because you've connected, you've joined with a bunch of nobodies. I said it to them, yes, and I'm talking to you if you're sticking with them. And so because you join with them, you have no choice but to follow them. 
So some of us right now, we are in places and we don't know how we got here because it was crazy. He joined here. I got to be redundant. He joined here, but he sent him by himself because the text does not suggest that he has somebody else in the pig sign with him. Ain't it crazy that you, you, you took my weakness, you took my family, my moment of family, and you set me up. I did not see this coming. You, you, you saw me broken hearted and I didn't know you were sending me to sell my body. You saw me. Okay. okay. Here's the problem where we struggle. I'm sorry. Let me not be so absolute as to offend, offend you. Here's what I've seen people struggle with. We have people in conditions right now because of what's going on in the world, which are magnified because they already existed in so many cases. And we're judging them because they in the swine and they're in and doing things, thinking things, looking like, smelling like stuff that we thought they would never be. You know what's crazy? We judging and they're hurting. Some of us don't have enough sense, not y'all, us. Some of us don't have enough sense. I'm freeing somebody. Clearly, I know right now it's evident why God has sent me here today because the rain was not going to deter me. It's evident why God sent me here today to stay in this atmosphere. I know how to be at home. I really do. But God has committed me to this imagery because I know God is in my car. I, I'm not trying to have Bible study in my car, but God told me to be here. It is Most of us right now, and I'm speaking to you that are listening, that people can only see that your current condition is not who you're supposed to be. And here they are going, man, you need to get that together. You need to fix it. You know the one thing they're not talking about? Are you hurting? Mm -hmm. I know I ain't supposed to be broke. I know I should be doing better. Help. I know I shouldn't be in this apartment. And I'm not bad modeling apartments because some people, that's their journey. I'm talking about the person that God has commanded more, that is supposed to be a facilitator and someone that should be imitated as unto God to go to another level. And no, nobody know how to heal you because they're too busy telling you this is not where you're supposed to be. And you're too busy trying to tell them, I'm only here because, one, I connected with the wrong person. And if you want to backpedal that, I should have never left my father. Because now I understand what it means to be in his presence. Can I help? Can I continue to help you? Sometimes you got to leave people at rock bottom so that they can appreciate it's not what God can always give you. It's about who God is. Uh, first, I want to help some parents. Sometimes your son or daughter got to be in that ditch longer than you can stand it because they don't understand what it means to be blessed. Well, I'm living it right now because we might fall in love with the hands of our parents but don't understand the sacrifice for our parents. Can I prove it to you? When the father, let's move from point, let's move points. Remember, this is where he's resting now because of the famine. This is where he joined because of his foolishness. This is where he's with his father because he wanted his portion. Are, are you ready for this? We don't understand the brokenheartedness and the embarrassment that we, he caused his father within that city or within that town. Can I tell you how, can I tell you how good God is? Okay, Cheryl, you, you want to hear this. God is so good, he risks embarrassment blessing us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God knows for some of us, the moment you get that new job, he knows it's going to be a while before you give. You ain't fooling God. Come on now. He know you, he know you lying. Y'all, some of us would have got smart. Remember when we get in trouble, we say, God, I promise you go. God, I, God I'm going to do better. <laughs> If you get me out this time, I promise I'm not. I, I can't think of not one person that say that unless they're like 12. Because I have lived long enough that I don't ask God for second chances. I just look for another one. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, I just sir. need another one. Because clearly I blew my second one a long time ago. Can I, can I help you real quick? Why the, the, the mud is in your eye? The Bible says in the pigsty, he came to himself. I like that. That means that somebody lived that. Y'all ready? One more again. In the in the mess, uh, oh, in the muck and mire. That's what I was raised in. In that foolishness, in that BS, in in that stuffing things, in that streets, in that whatever, in that heartache, in that condition, in the stuff he wasn't supposed to be or she wasn't supposed to be in. He came to himself. Do, do y'all see it in the text? Here's my problem. We when we see people come. Okay, talk to me. Talk. If a person was on drugs, it's just it's just easy. 
person was on drugs, clearly, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a hallucinogen. I'm talking about drugs, wet stuff. Y'all might not know what that is. I'm talking about drugs. They look like it, right? When they come to themselves, ideally, they don't look like it. Come on, talk to them. They, don't, they, they, they dress better. They, 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 the system is cleaned up. The skin is better, right? right? And so oftentimes, their station in life or their place in life is reflective that, oh, man, they done came to themselves. They're back at church. You know, they're back at work. They're back at the family. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be safe to assume to you that are here, right? Yeah. No. Coming to yourself has never been about the outward man. Coming to yourself has always been about the inward man. You know why a lot of people don't know how to support you when you made a change? Because mm -hmm. you're still in your bad decision. My God. Yeah. I'm doing real good. Mm -hmm. Ain't that old boy that took his portion from his dad? Yeah, man, he disrespected his father. Man, look, that's what happened. That's what he get. He up here ain't got nothing in here with these pigs. And the whole time in his mind saying, if I could just get back to my father's house. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to live. <laughs> ain't that old girl that used to go to Christ first, man, she ragged. And she's still on the bus and don't realize she just left a job interview and on her way to church to Bible study. Oh, can I do better? Some of you smell like your bad decision last night. Oh, my God. But they don't realize you've already changed your mind. Some of you see, I, I had somebody, I had one young lady and her husband would come to church faithfully. And I'm talking about more faithful than any, any believer in the body, this one particularly. And someone recognized it and said, oh my God, I, I, I like that she's changed. You know, so if we can just get her, you know, to just change her outfits. I said, you do know in what she currently has on, she has never missed Bible study. Uh -huh. She has never missed a Sunday service. She goes to every revival I'm in. She brings her family and her husband and kids. On, I said, she better you. not change her clothes. Because <laughs> right. that, I don't like it, white people. That tank top is working for me. Come on. I, now, now, if she wants to get dolled up and she wants to be in, when in Rome, do as a Romans, absolutely. If you have a level of decency, yes, I'm not saying be naked. But if that is where you came to yourself, mm -hmm. work it, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. Am I making sense? Come on. Work it, girl. Come on. Because everybody else got the Jesus outfit, and I got I got the flip a coin. If I'm gonna see you Sunday, <laughs> you got the you got the mandated Jesus worship, and your hand go right on time. You anticipate the worship, but I got to see. It. But she give her last. You won't give, and you got it. Yeah, come on. She has come to herself, but we don't know it because she looks like her condition. Go on, trying to help somebody. He is in the pigsty and says to himself, if I may but just return to my father, even the servants in my father's house can eat. Can I, did y'all get it? Well, y'all got did, did you get it? And some of you right now, you're waiting for people to pat you on the back. Some of you are waiting for the supervisor to agree with your turnaround mindset. Some of you are waiting for upward management to identify that you're the right person for the job. Can I tell you, if don't nobody ever pat you on the back, right where you made up your mind, trust God right where you are. Because yes. some of us will not shift out of our pigsty until somebody come and get us. Listen, just because you change your mind, don't nobody owe you either. Say it. Oh, I wish I was. Say some of y'all playing. You know, oh, you know, I'm sorry. Okay, and you did it. How many people gonna be honest that somebody do you dirty and when they say you sorry, they expect you to come? You okay? Okay, you sorry? You sorry? Yeah, you sorry for a few weeks. You sorry? Yeah. People would think that everyone does not have to accept your penance. Penance. Mm -hmm. Everyone does not have to accept your repentant heart. You, you, you need, do you know that? Exactly. Like that's not just yeah. not me being condescending. Do you know that? Yeah. Everybody don't care. That you've changed your mind. You know why? Everybody don't care. Because some people don't want to be where you've been. Right. Everybody don't care that you had kids out of wedlock and you made it. So what? Everybody don't care that you went to jail and God blessed you. They don't care. And stop waiting for people to care about what God has done for you. And be careful when you do want people to care what God is doing in you. Because yeah. oftentimes God will do something. Hear me in 2020. God will do something in you. While you're in a place where people can't see it. Because you want to know why? The wrong place with the right mind is protection. Thank you. Who going to bother that dude in the pig Nobody. In order for anybody of his sort, 
in order for anybody uh, from where he come from, from his cloth and cloth and clout, they would have to have take the road he took. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine somebody that really knew him go, ah, oh, he ain't changed. Mm -hmm. He ain't changed. Mm -hmm. he, ain't, he ain't changed. Sometimes, I understand if I'm like the, the amen and the, that's cool, God will work it out. Sometimes God has to give you the right mind mm -hmm. in the wrong place. Yes, that's cool, you ain't been there, but go talk to the man that was in prison and that's where his business idea rose up. Mm -hmm. Go ask to the, to the young lady that quit school and, and, and fell out and, and, and digressed in so many ways, but it was in the gutter that she understood the right plan. Yeah. Sometimes you get the right mind in the wrong place. Yeah. How, how many times you was about to roll it and smoke it and went, nah, man, let me stop. It wasn't at home when you was doing nothing. You had it in your hand and said, I got the right mind now. When was the last time you actually poured it, was drinking it, not about to, you were sipping it and said, this ain't me no more. Uh, you got the right mind, but you in the wrong place. Yeah. How many times you was at the club and said, I ain't coming back? <clears throat> no, you went at home talking. You went at church going, you know what? That's right, the Holy Spirit room. I ain't going to, I ain't going to the club no more. You was in the club. And it was at the club you said, I'm done. I'm done. The Bible says that when he came to his right mind, here's the one danger that we have. This is the one danger and I'm done. When he came to his right mind, he said uh, in verse 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? Bread enough and to spare. I need you to get that. Remember, he's in want to where he, he wants the essentials. When he thinks about going back to his father's house, I, really, I actually really respect TV ministry more than I ever have today. More than I ever have. More than I ever have. I would be careful to badmouth anybody. I wasn't raised like that by my pastor. But when I, was, when I would watch the preacher, the evangelist, the bishop, whomever, make this plea to the screen, truly I know, you know the, the, God, the gift of God that he has loaned me. But all I feel is a compelling right now, and I just feel so strange because I've always had my audience in front of me, and even of a great magnitude. But I'm gonna say to y'all first, and to everyone that's watching, the reason why some of you have not restored yourself back to God is because you have downsized or diminished your relationship. I'm about to part right here. The Bible says that when he did deep, when he did mess up, he's in want. That means he doesn't have the essentials, Cassie. You hear me? So that means he don't even have what he needs. When he thinks about going home, the only position he wants to be in is that of a servant, arguably, because his measurement is one, I failed him as a son. So if I go back as a servant, they have bread and a little something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us, we know that we have failed God as a child of God. And it's hard to go back. Yes, it is. It's just hard to go back. It ain't just we don't know God, don't love us. It ain't. It, it ain't. We, we ain't no fool. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know, he, we know he do stuff that we don't like, but he don't make no mistakes. We know all things work together for good, but they don't need it to always feel that way. Um, to them to love him and call it according to his purpose. We know trouble don't last always, but it lasts long enough. Mm -hmm. You won't put nothing more in you can bear, but you sure get tired. Mm -hmm. We've been maybe doing it for a night, but y'all coming in the morning, and you crying at night and in the morning. Yeah. And then when you finally come to yourself, you recognize, I just go back as a servant. Now, I'm not talking about the dual nature of us, because we have the... We have the we have the kingship as princes and, and, and as royalty, the, the responsibility of servants. Yeah. But when he thought about going home, he didn't go home. He didn't want to go home as a son. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go home as a servant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. I'm doing good, I promise you. And I, I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about my ability. Mm. There's some people tonight need to go home. but they don't know how to go back to the position they once had. And I'm not talking about pastor or deacon. And, and you know what? I'm even talking about that. 
You don't know how to go back to the choir. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because the last time you did it, that fool said, look what the cat drove me. Ah. Okay. And it took everything you had not to give him a two-piece. And I ain't talking about the chicken meal. <laughs> the last time you did it, you know what I'm saying? The last time you came in, the preacher preached you the whole message. Look at, look at, oh, look on Carolyn. So glad she's here. You know, so sometimes God will just leave you out there. Oh, for real? So I'm the message? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I ain't going back. Oh, God, and then don't let me go back right near the family union. All your real, real, real Christian aunties show up. <laughs> Lord help. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I want to free you tonight. You can try and go back as a servant if you want to. It's not going to work. He goes back home as the parable was stated. And the Bible says that his father was anticipating. I'm going to read it, and I'm, this is the only one I'm going to read it, and I'm going to give it to you. When he thought about going home, knowing that the servants have bread enough and to spare, they mean they got something to give out. Yeah. They, they, they're living, ideally, if you will, in overflow as servants. I want you to think about that. What was his condition as a son? He says, I'm going to rise. You're going to rise? Where are you making your mind to, help to do all this? I'm still in the big stuff. Well, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to go to my father's house, verse 18, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And in case you thought I was making this up, if you haven't read it or you personally want to preach it, but then go into this depth, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Ah. He demoted himself mm -hmm. because of sin. Yes. Mm. I'm not being dramatic. Everybody know me. I just I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it together. There's some, there's a lot of people in here have demoted themselves. I know you have because I've done it. Mm -hmm. really I, sin and nah. I'm not worthy to anticipate God still going to bless me. I'm not worthy to believe. Because remember, when I think of God blessing me, I understand that he blesses children. Yes. I want you to put it together. So if I don't believe that I'm worthy of the relationship, then that means that I'm not anticipating God to bless me. Yes. For his actions are, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. He had it, he had it right. But I failed you, so don't worry about looking at me as a son anymore. I'm changing our relationship. Who in the world gave you the privilege, the right, or the power to do something that happened in eternity's past that didn't have your vote involved? At the round table of God between him, his son, and the Holy Spirit, Before I formed thee, I knew thee. Yes. Yeah. I sanctified thee. To, to know something, by definition, is to have an intimacy. And it's also the knowledge of intimacy through touch. Which means that in the, in, in the mind of God, that is literally a formation of man. Okay. Have you ever heard somebody, have you ever heard somebody say, one of your children does something without name? And you say, I know which one. Because I know my kids. Yes. So he, he tries to go back home and demote himself in relationship. Can I tell you where he messed up? We have the prerogative to mess up fellowship. We don't have no power to change relationship. Thank you. You, have, you, cannot, you cannot have seen your daddy in the next last 20 years. I don't care how much you can't stand him. He's still your damn daddy. Yes. I said it just like I felt it. What has happened is you can't change the relationship. You just changed the fellowship. Oh, I wish I would talk to some hateful children right now. Just because your father or the, mother, and yes, they did offend you. But you can't change relationship because you're mad. You change fellowship. Yeah. You, if you die tomorrow and he never see you, you die his daughter. Yes. No matter what. No matter what. But changing fellowship ain't powerful enough. You want to prove how angry you are, so you're trying to change relationship. Can I tell you what that is? You're really proving how much you love him. Because other people have hurt you, you still call him. Uh -huh. <laughs> we just ain't friends like we used to be. Right. 
But somebody that's in your re that relationship, you trying to change. That ain't my daddy. Yes, it is. You got here like that. The Stark story is not real. Come on. So he has sinned before God and his father, and he demotes himself. But God says, I ran the risk when I blessed you, and I'm going to run the risk when I restore you. Because the Bible says in the parable, and I'm looking at my time, the Bible says that when the father saw him coming, I dare you to read it. It ain't but many verses. He took off running. He took off running towards his son. <clears throat> During that time, there was a, uh, <clears throat> uh, in that Palestinian, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, dispensation, period of time. Um, that when you come against a father in embarrassment of a name like that, that the people had a legal right to stone you. So the reason why the father was running was to protect him from the law. Yeah. The law of God, the righteousness of God, the, 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 God's holiness demands righteousness. We didn't have none. And so when we break the law, we, we deserve to die. The wages of sin is death. Come on, stop guessing. The wages of sin is death. You remember, he came back and said, I'm going to my daddy, and I'm home telling him, I have sinned against who? Uh, and, and, the, yeah. and the wages of sin is death. So when his father saw him coming in the parable, he was protecting him from death. Mm. <laughs> but not death because his father was going to kill him, death from the town. Yeah. Oh, I'm helping somebody. I, I, I'm almost done. Here's what's crazy when you get restored back to God and you may come to yourself, you know the most dangerous act after that are people. Yeah. Mm. We have some spiritual terrorists in church. Say it. You, you, they don't know what it took for you to come to yourself. They don't know what it took for you to put it down. They don't know what it took for you to get over your depression. They don't know what it took for you to get over your heartache. They don't know what it took for you to get over your past mistakes. You up here bad about me. You can't talk about me worse than I talk about me. And I finally got over myself in the hell that I was in. And I'm trying to get back to God. And I can't get past you. Come on. I was going to say something else. Mm. I'm on my way to God, but I can't get past you. You're supposed to be protecting me. So the father understood the law of that land during that dispensation in time. So he took off running to cover him. And so I'm talking to anybody, whether you're in the room or need to return to God. I want to be honest with you. People, people love God. As Christians, they can't stand it. And we are killing. The church ain't empty because the devil is that busy. He is definitely busy. The church is empty because it's too dangerous to come back. Because we all know everybody's business. Partly your fault because you put it on Facebook. Mm. True. Everybody ain't snitching. You tell them you yourself. That's called dry snitching. Don't put it on there and then say, people need to stay out of my business. You posted it. Right. And then leave it private. And I'm literally not trying to be funny. <laughs> he comes and protects him and restores him. And then I want to read this to you so I can be done. When he came... And he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. Fell on his neck. Did the Bible say he cleaned himself? Remember? Did the Bible say he, he washed? He don't have essentials, so he don't have access. So when the father covered him, he covered him in his condition. Yes. Can I tell you where else he was covering him? The presence of the Lord had to be with him in order to return back to the town. The people had to recognize him. Yeah. Y'all ain't feeling that. Okay, come here, New Testament. Woman with the issue of blood. How did you make it all the way to Jesus? Touch the hem of his garment and nobody see you. See you. Because during that time, if you were unclean and touched somebody, you would be deemed unclean. There was a Levitical order where you can be clean through like so many days of washing. I, I got to re refresh myself on that, but I give it to you if you want it. And so when the Bible says that she he touched him, you should ask the question. Because when he touched him, one of the disciples said, everybody touched you. Which means that, that they're acutely aware. Why did you see her? For, it says for, in Psalms, it says for the, uh, God will give you the spirit of, God will give you, what is that? Uh, for, for the, it, there's a transference that happens. I'm going to give it to you. It's basically for the spirit of mourning. For your spirit of mourning, there's a transference that happens where God will cover you. God will cover you. Have, I, have, have you ever come to church absolutely not feeling like you're praising? That you literally tried to praise your way out? Yes, sir. You almost felt like a liar. Yes, sir. You wanted to cry. You hate that you got dressed. You hate to put your clothes on. You hate that you did your hair. But you really just want to come in the front row with your Ugg boots and a tank top and just sit there and go, I ah, just, you preach, you got to do something. I'm about to kill myself. You hate that you got your, you cried doing your hair. Oh my God. 
God. Like, what am I doing? I almost feel like I'm lying because this is not how I feel. But it's something about how when you trust God, God will just cover you. You clapping and they think everything all right. You just can't believe you clapping. You crying because I can't believe that it's in me to still celebrate you when I feel like giving up. Yeah, man. And so when the woman cried and when the woman, when God said he touched me, that lets you know that they did not see her condition. Yeah. She had been bleeding 12 years for proof that she's sickened and dying. Her skin is, is, is her, she can even be elongated. She's dried up. She's ugly. But then nobody recognized her because she said, if I could pay touch to him in his garment. And where did she get the faith? So that you know I'm not preaching to God. Who? Within she said within herself. herself. Where did he get his faith? Within himself. Because when he came to himself. We're in a time right now. Let me pronounce it this way so that I'm not afraid of the office God has given me. I, 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 I release this in a prophetic manner. We're in a time right now where you don't have much longer before God reveals, heals, and removes us from this moment. Mm. And you're going to be back in church. Mm. You're going to be back in front of the crowd. And you're going to miss that blessed opportunity yeah. to come to yourself. Mm. I don't want you to hear me. Why? God is so good that he recognized the timidness or the timidity that can happen when we fall so far from God. The woman that was at the well, he sent the crowd away. Y'all go in town and get some food. He sent the disciples in. And the women that normally would come together to draw, that's why it was so tiresome because they would normally help each other. God is so good that he's not a miraculous. He understands character and weakness. I'm not talking to anybody where God has dealt with you privately. Have you ever, have you ever met, I'm done. Have you ever felt one of those moments where, <laughs> have you ever been in church and the pastor keep doing that little Jesus thing? You go, oh my God, please do not come over here with that. Please. Oh, I should have went to the bathroom. Please don't come over here with that dust and large stuff because if she take anything. And then church is over and then I meet you outside by your car. And I say, hey, let me talk to you. Like, wow. God is so such God is so respectful. Some of us we need that public thing. Some of us we need that gathering. We're I, I speak to Sophie and I'm done. We're coming back together, y'all. Yes, sir. The building's gonna be full again. Amen. It's full now because we're watching and we're still trusting. But when the crowd comes back together, and that preacher say that altar call, hey, if there's someone depressed, you come to the altar. And the very reason you don't move is because you think everybody's moving. And now and that dude ain't no problem. Ain't nobody moving. Yeah, he is. You just scared. Mm -hmm. God is allowing a few of us some private time mm -hmm. to come to yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you come back home, but you come back as no servant. You come back in the position that you left. And if you're unsure, mark my words in Jesus. He, when he ran and fell upon him, the walk back is one of restoration. I don't have time to go through it. He clothed him, put sandals on him, put an insignia on him, which is you know, signifying the family, Crest. not brooch. Crest. Crest, thank you. That's identification. Yes, you can call yourself what you want. I'm going to do something to you so good that people are going to know who you are. It is, it is April what? 7th. Seven. Seven. April 7th. Seven. Measure me by these words in God. <clears throat> when these buildings get, let's not say full, open again, y'all ain't going to be able to pay attention to some sermons because you're going to be too busy looking at who drove that here. She lost some weight. He sure looking good. Where'd that smile come from? The friend that you really wanted to go help and hate that this social distancing has not allowed you to swing by because y'all was praying over her depression. And when y'all get close, you go, girl, I'm good. You sure? I promise you need help. During this time where I was by myself, I came to myself and I realized who I am. Yeah. I realized who I am.
I believe daughters will forgive mothers, sons will forgive fathers, and vice versa. I believe healing will happen not because God is punishing us. He's not petty. But that he's using things that have happened in this world and say, well, you know, someone else called this, but I will get the glory out of this. Dear God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this blessed opportunity. Uh, thank you for keeping the veil over some of our foolishness. Yes, Jesus. And loving us and giving us enough time to recognize that we have broken your heart, but we can't tell it because we still got a job. We have broken your heart, but we can't tell it because we still got nice cars in the driveway. We've broken your heart. We can't tell it because while everybody is scammering to get a little toilet paper, you got a bunch of it in the closet trying to pass it out. We don't even know we've broken God's heart because we got stuff in vain. But in the name of Jesus, dear God, don't, 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 don't take away your things from me for me to recognize what I have not done. In the midst of this restoration, Lord, I apologize. And I want to say I'm sorry and I have sinned against heaven and against thee, whoever that might be on this earth. But when you restore this walk of restoration, I thank you, Lord God, for protecting me from the attacks of man. They may still come, but they won't prevail. Hear me now. Don't say the prayer didn't work because they talk about you. They're going to still talk about you. It just yeah. won't hurt. Yeah. They're going to lie on you. You can just still stand. They're going to come for you. You just don't have to come back. Thank you. Because God knows who you are. And when you know who you are, you know how to handle yourself. Thank you. I believe that to be so. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a step further. And I certify that in the name of Jesus. I know it to be so. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you believe that, come on, just give God some praise. And thank God for this blessing. we release you that are watching um, count it your responsibility of not chiming in and just sharing um, how, uh, be reminded that uh, I want to say this on the, I was going to say it Sunday but God said leave it alone we're going to see By very definition, the word stimulus or stimuli, and I can give you very in-depth, I'm not, I'm not a practitioner or doctor by any means, but I do know how to study it. And we'll talk about the aggregates with you. It's to stimulate something to continue its function yes, and sir. functionality. Yes, sir. Which, in many cases, by definition of stimulus, mm -hmm. it has to be a living organism. Yeah. So when you stimulate it, 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 it's a continuation. Yeah. It's a continued flow. That's why this right here, I can feel it. I can do the same thing on a dead body and there's no stimulant mm -hmm. or stimulation. This is not political. $1,200 won't be enough to keep you functioning. Come on. Mm -hmm. Receive it. But you need to stay in front of God for your true stimulus. Yeah. Jesus. Some of you tonight gonna receive the word and don't realize there's a response which is in your giving. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, God's response is your stimulus power. Not just the financial, but favor, the right relationship, the job. I wish Alex O'Neill was here. He, he said he got a job that he didn't even ask for. Mm -hmm. My cousin Trinell heard the sermon message Sunday and said, I got a promotion and I work from home. Yes, ah. Jesus. I don't have time to bore you with all that because I want to stay within the hour frame or the few minutes over that money. Hear me tonight. You're not buying God. You don't got that kind of money. And it's his in the first place. But there's a response to God. Yes. Respond to God in your giving to your, your home church. Respond to God in your giving to the word of God that's being imparted into you. And what you receive from this nation, they're not, they're not measured to what other countries are doing. Low-key, we should all move to Canada for the next two months and then come back. Yeah. You're going to be good. You ain't gonna be, your evictions have been held off. <laughs> right. And by the way, as we're done, Thank God that they're staying your eviction. But why do you have one in the first place? Mm -hmm. 
Take care of your business. To God be the glory. You know the forms and fashions, and we'll receive tonight. Come on, let's give God a praise.